looks like everything's all set backstage, so we're excited to be able to begin. Uh, my name is Rachel Northrup. For those of you who don't know me, I am the director of this production, and um, this is run by the Faith Promise Players, and we want to glorify God in all that we do. And so we're so excited to share this special missionary story this time. Now, uh, this is about Gladys Aylward. She was a missionary to China. How many of you know who Gladys Aylward is? Have read about her maybe? Okay, hey, we got a good section over here. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I'm excited that this is something that we get to introduce to you because Gladys is a wonderful example of being somebody that was willing to be used by God. And if you looked at your um, program, it talked just a little bit about her, but um, she was born in 1902, and of course, um, God did so many things in her life, this story can only span a little bit of it. But uh, one thing that I really wanted to focus on was um, her being willing to be used by God. And uh, she read this magazine about how there were millions in China who had never heard the gospel. And she immediately was kind of stunned by it, decided that she wanted to do something about it. So she started asking people to go to China. And she was looking for the best for God. She wanted the people that were intellectual, the people that were wealthy, that had influence. And none of them wanted to go. And she finally asked her brother, and she had decided if he said no, she was done asking people. But he turned it on her and said, well, why don't you go? And she thought about it, and after a while, she decided that she'd never ask somebody else to do the calling that was really for her. But Gladys came from a poor family. She hardly had any education. And actually, she failed in the mission school. They um, said that she was too old to learn Mandarin. But God still used her anyway. And all of us have something special that God wants you to do. And it doesn't matter what you don't think you have. Because he can use anybody that's willing. So that's something that I want you guys to think about as you watch this show. Um, it does take place, like I said, in the early 1900s. Um, we are starting the story when she first comes into China. And at that point and throughout the story, because we kind of had to cover a long period of time, um, it does start to get into World War II time. Just so you guys are kind of a little bit aware of the background. Uh, some of the students are going to play multiple characters, so you'll get to see them uh, have different personalities, which is always fun. And uh, this space is going to represent multiple locations. Um, we welcome you to take any pictures as you like, but if you could silence your cell phones just to not distract the students as much as possible. And um, I'm going to pray, and then we'll get started. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this amazing opportunity that these students have to share the story of Gladys Aylward, uh, somebody that you were willing to use. And thank you that it doesn't stop there because you're willing to use all of us, Lord. And I ask that you use all of these students tonight so that they can present the story well to the best of their ability and even better than they've done before. And also that this audience will be able to leave knowing more about you. And we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Yang Cheng, I pictured this moment so many times, but never so vividly. The enchanting rooftops, the endless mountains, like another world. Jeannie Lawson lives here. Thank you. Mrs. Lawson, who are you? people 
people don't see many foreigners. I'm eager to learn unto you, but where is your ministry? I'm afraid I'm about to disappoint you, Gladys. In China, the entire idea of God's love is foreign. Connecting is a process. What do you do, Mrs. Lawson? I pray, and every day I work on the next step. But how do you know what the next step is? Don't think of it as so mysterious. Every moment doesn't contain life-changing decisions. Be faithful in the simple, and he will show you. When could we go into the city? I'd love to see the people God has sent me to. When Yang visits the market, you may venture a little into the town. I will take you. Come, see the new street entertainer. So many ancient temples and such poverty. Hello, what's your name? You look funny. Oh yes, I do look a little different, don't I? Go away. It's okay, I won't hurt you. I want to be your friend. Is this your sister? We don't want foreigners. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Even I can't believe Jeannie's gone. Mrs. Lawson was a good woman, even if she did try to take over my kitchen when she first came. Mm -hmm. What will you do now? I don't know. Continue on, I suppose. The inn operates well. Do you have enough resources? Funds are a little low, but I've learned that if God calls, he will provide. Put into practice what Jeannie has taught you, yes? Yes. I knew that you wouldn't be able to resist adopting a child. There are too many orphans without homes. Somehow, I know God gave me this child. A woman on the side of the road offered her to me for nine pence. She wouldn't have died otherwise. Her parents were likely poor and did not wish to keep her. Or worse, the woman stole her to sell. My poor sweet girl. She needs someone to show her she has value. Did you want some hot food? Let me try. Hello. Would you like to sit on a nice soft blanket? She dislikes me as much as she dislikes you. Lord, please help me to reach this child. Can I take your bowl? Okay. I'll just stay over here and talk, all right, Ninepence? So she has a name? That's what it took to redeem her. She will know that she belongs to me, and I pray that someday her soul will belong to God. Children. And 
likely won't be the last. Are you talking of the Japanese attacks? We don't have much to tempt the Japanese army. If they come, what will we do about the children? Do our best to keep them safe. Sometimes I wonder if it's more than I can physically handle. Could I have been wrong? She wishes she didn't adopt me. Nine pence! What? Abaji doesn't like spying. I wasn't spying. I was. Was there something you wanted? It's your turn to clean the kitchen. Oh. Why is your face all splotchy? It's not. Uh huh. Right here. <laughs> I just. Do you ever wonder why someone wouldn't want you? Why would I wonder that? Forget it. You're a boy. People like boys. They want sons. And sometimes they're blessed with daughters. All we did. I think the inn is missing some of its top sweepers. On it! I always loved the first rays of sun in the morning. It's pretty. Did you know that God created each day unique? Just like he created each little girl special? Do you ever wish you were back in England? That you didn't have so many children to take care of? I miss my family, but no. I wouldn't trade getting to meet you or Les or any of the other children. I'm so proud and grateful to be a Chinese citizen now, just like you. But you said you were afraid you made a mistake. Not about being here. Sometimes in my weakness, I try to do things in my own power. That's when I get scared. But it's God who gives us strength. Through him, I'm strong. I want to trust God, but my parents didn't want me. What if what if God doesn't want me? He wants you so much more than you can even imagine. Do you know how he said Jesus came to earth to die for mankind? Yes, but I'm not mankind. I'm just me. Nine pence, he came for you. And he would have come if you were the only one. Really? The Bible says that before you were born, he knew you. He fashioned you and planned out the color of your eyes, your hair, the day and time you would be born, and what family you would be born into. And do you know what? What? God planned that one day, at just the right time, I would see you, and I would choose you to become part of my family. I'm glad. But do you know what is more important? That you belong to God. Only he can give you life, eternal life with him forever. That's what he wants to do, make you a part of his family. Can I be a part of his family and still be a part of yours? You definitely can. In fact, I've prayed about that ever since I first met you. Would you like God to be your heavenly father? Yes. Dear Jesus, <laughs> I know that you came to earth from heaven and that you died for me. But you didn't stay dead. You rose again so I could live too. I want you to be my savior and to be a part of your family forever. Amen. Welcome to God's family. Nine pence, we're late for school. I'm coming. Can we can stop by the square? Maybe there'll be a new street entertainer in the market today. I bet this one has a dancing bear. Or a juggler. Or something. Maybe both. I don't know. We could rent double us estimated for any time. All right, but we have to move quickly. Come, Come on! on! I'll beat you! No, I no. will! I will. <laughs> Not we there first! It's even better than I thought! Silver birds in the sky! They don't look like real birds. Of course not! Bird for 
Francis, a way for man to travel in the sky. They're called airplanes. Why would they hurt us? Because evil men want to rule China, Francis. These men use violence and armies to gain power. Would I don't know, but God is our refuge and our strength. Do you know who else he protected? The Jewish people. The Jews praised God for their freedom after bringing them out of Egypt, but they had a long journey ahead of them. Do you know what God used to show them the way? A cloud flew by day and a pillar of fire by night. That's right. <gasps> it's okay, children. We're safe here. God controls all things. He brought all of you to live with me. We are warm, we have food, but most importantly, we have him. I would they. <gasps> Yay! See? Praise the Lord if he kept you safe. I didn't know we something. You are very fortunate. Many homes, just rocks. I would they. We are safe, yes, for a time. The Mandarin and his family are choosing to flee this area. I suggest you do the same. I will stay and fight for our home. What of the children that we are to protect? We cannot hide them from bombs and invading armies. Isn't leaving retreating? Shouldn't I have enough faith that I am willing to risk the danger? Perhaps it is realizing when God directs you to a new step. I believe you are to leave with the children. Does it come to this? We talked about what we would do if war came. You didn't know then because it wasn't time. Do not be afraid to move to the next part of your journey. But where could I take so many to safety? Madam Shang Kai-shek promises to help orphan refugees. You could take them to Siam. But it's such a long journey to Siam. Also much farther away from the war. Let the Lord guide your path. Are we there? Are we leaving? Yes. Gather yeah, the children together. I will miss you, my friends. As will we. May God be with you and the children. Come, children. We are going on a long journey. A little bit like Moses and the children of Israel did. So, let's begin our journey. Forward, march! We will follow the Lord. Lead us on. Guide each step we take. We will follow where Francis, where you lead. What if you run into enemy soldiers? Hide low and get to the gun until the danger passes. This looks like a good spot to camp. I'm so tired. Me too. Do we have any food? I could eat and eat and still not be full. Remember, we have to ration our food. <laughs> Rest and think of something else. I would ate some of our cater <gasps> Rocks. Yes, the rough mountainside fights us. I will give you what I have, but we are limited. Will you tell us a story? All right. Once there was a man named Abram. Abram loved God. God decided to bless Abram. So he took him outside where there were countless stars just like tonight. Do you know what God said? Abram, I am going to make from you a people. The number of them will be as many as the stars in the sky. Notice we don't have a lot of food. That's true. I don't see how. Nine pence, look at them all now. Sleeping soundly, peaceful. Do you know that God watches all of us, longing for us to depend so completely on him? Yeah, but we don't know where we're going. It will be okay when we get there. What are all these things happening to us? Why is there war? Why? It's been so brave. This is a hard journey, and I'm so proud of you. You are? I don't have all the answers. We have to trust. Yes, I'll be there. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but I know that you are good. We will continue to follow you. Be faithful to us as you have been to Abraham, Moses, and the children of Israel. We trust you to bring us through the rest of this journey. In your name, amen.
require a little more creativity in our way across. While we are waiting for our inspiration to catch up to us, we will be some of the <laughs> third night tips and who have gathered. I'm sorry, y'all. We, we didn't find any. I refuse to believe that. Must every step be riddled with disappointments? Are you all right? I would I? No, I'm not. I can't. We've come all this way and I... Oh God, you brought us so far. Will you forsake us now? Where are you? Have I not followed you every step? Lord, forgive me. I have no more strength. I cannot complete the task you've called me to. Are we day? <coughs> Lord, we are so tired. We don't understand. You've led us through the mountain. And now you've led us here. Give I would day strength. Do not forsake us, please. It's just like Moses and the Red Sea. He couldn't get across either. I'm not Moses. I know, but I would say. Isn't he the same God? Yes, yes, he is the same God. God, our Father, we need you now. You have been faithful to Abraham, Moses, and the children of Israel. And you have been faithful to us, and we trust you to bring us across the Yellow River. In your name, amen. Amen. Are we day? Has God cried the Yellow River yet? Let's see. <gasps> it still looks the same, but still. God is working. I know he is. Can we get something while we wait? <coughs> I keep thinking about my stomach. Me too. Yes, by all means, let's distract ourselves from our hunger. The children of Israel sang to thank God for his blessing. Why shouldn't we sing while we know that God will deliver us? Who has a favor? Let's do the blessing song! That's perfect. We will thank God for his blessing. Count your many blessings in the one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings. journey that you took us on. We, we felt like we were on a journey. And we felt like with them, they were overcoming obstacles. 
And maybe we could start to relate to that on our journey. Because we have obstacles too, don't we, sometimes? And does God call us all on a journey? Yes, he does call us on that walk with him. And you're familiar with the words in the New Testament as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ looked at Simon Peter. He said, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. You remember that. So Simon Peter and Andrew and James and John were fishers, fishers of men after they followed Jesus. Or rather, as they followed Jesus, it happened. And on that journey that God calls us on, and I make the comparison today as if we're going on an airplane trip, and we look at how many bags we're going to carry on that airplane trip, and we make decisions about some things we can't take with us because they're too heavy or it's too much. And sometimes in our journey with God, there are things that are, are too much and they are too heavy and we have to leave them behind. I mean things like unforgiveness and, and, and grudges that we might carry on our journey. They don't belong on the journey. We don't want to take that extra baggage on that journey. Remember the journey that we're on is going to be one for eternity. But along the way, just as they went along the way, God gives us the opportunity to walk with him day by day. And his calling goes forth to us. Yes, will you come follow me? Yeah, no matter who, no matter where. We're all on a journey. We're all in a in the journey to follow with the Lord and to learn to hear his voice and learn, I love that, step by step. Yes, you make the decision and you move step by step. That was so well done. I mean, it's, it's not real hard to understand. It's very simple. This woman felt the call of God on her life and she responded with a yes to God. Sometimes we can all feel, we get a sense the Holy Spirit is calling us in a particular area. And we have the opportunity to say, yes, I'll do it. It's like they told us. We hear, we pray, we make a step, and we move forward, and it's followed by another. And so I just would share with you this day that as the call of God has gone out to our heart, and I suspect that most of us in this room have said yes to God and have committed our lives to God, I want, would like for us to also think about the fact of in this play that was done by children, you heard God's message through the lives of children. And this message is for children and adults. Come, follow me. But, come, follow me. Let's all pray together, if you will. If that question is looming before you right now, if you've been slow or never have given God that yes, or it's been so long ago, it's been years, give a fresh yes to God this night. And don't carry anything with you that is too heavy and going to keep you from making that walk with God. So to our Holy Father, gracious, almighty, Creator God, who knows us individually by name. In Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, our very covenant of life eternal, the forgiver of our sins, we again, in our hearts, say yes. We choose again this night to follow you. And we leave behind anything 
that we shouldn't be carrying on this journey. If there be any form of unforgiveness for bearing a grudge. If there be any unconfessed sins in our life. If there be any wrong attitudes in our heart. We drop it right here and now at your feet, Lord Jesus. We ask for you to forgive us because we do want to follow you and we want to make a fresh commitment this night. We recommit ourselves to you and some maybe for the first time in a long, long time. And I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would infill and empower us, everyone, so that we too can boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ wherever we go, whatever we do. And I pray, Lord God, that we will hear that small, still voice within our hearts, that you will make him precious upon us, Lord, who to speak to and what to say, acts of love, acts of kindness, taking a moment to pray for others, Father, responding to you, giving us quiet time with you, whereby we may pray and read your word. It's our desire to follow you. We commit ourselves to follow you once again on this night of September 2024. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. We, uh, as Rachel has, has said this evening, and I think we have refreshments in the back and we said that already, I think. You were welcomed at the doors with program. And we also receive a, a charitable free will gift, if you will, for an investment into this ministry. Yeah, yeah. And so we thank you for that. Thank you for considering that. And we thank you for coming this evening. Yes, ma'am. All right, well, this concludes our production for the evening, but I'm going to have the cast come up now. And so feel free to get a refreshment. Feel free to come up, uh, like I said, along this side to meet everybody. And we would love to be able to thank you personally for coming. <laughs>